All right. Welcome, everyone, to Drupal NYC, April 2021. We're getting started. We are making the announcements now. So a little housekeeping before we get started. If you joined and can turn on your video camera, we'd love to see you. If not, we're glad you're here. Um, but if you're able to, please enable your video camera. Mute yourself if you're not speaking. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and, and let us know. Don't use the Zoom's uh, text chat. Let's chat in our Slack channel. That way there's a history and we can go back and, and see the conversations that we have tonight. Um, inside our Slack channel is a channel hashtag meetup that you could join. Um, and if you're not a member of our Slack community, I hope you join that too. And that's drupalnyc.org slash Slack. Tonight, we're going to have a, a couple of lightning talks. If uh, somebody would like to volunteer to give a lightning talk, we do have the time. And then we're excited to hear from Martin about robust event systems for your Drupal site. And he's going to do that in minutes, so he says. So um, today's meetup was organized by uh, this crew. And if you are interested in helping organize a meetup, We'd love to have you. Again, in our Slack channel, there's a channel, meetup hyphen organize, where you could talk to us. We can use help in, in uh, any type of way. And so it doesn't need to be a big obligation. Uh, and if you're interested in getting involved, please get in touch with us. In addition to the Slack channel that's been mentioned a few times at drupalnyc.org slash Slack, there is a Twitter account too, uh, Drupal NYC. So if you are tweeting or sharing about tonight's event, please hashtag that Drupal NYC and follow us on Twitter. I'd like to give a shout out to the Drupal Association. Uh, if you're not a member of the Drupal Association, a membership is a, a pretty low hanging fruit for an individual membership and it goes a long way to help the Drupal Association, which does so much for our community um, and uh, there's a URL on the screen now that's drupal.org slash association. And so we hope you'll support the Drupal Association. A few upcoming events. Uh, Drupal Fest is going on throughout April with a bunch of different events you can join. Uh, and DrupalCon North America is coming up soon. Ally Talks, making a COVID-19 site accessible from tweet to action will be on April 22nd. Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Camp in June. That's June 11th through 12th. Decouple Days uh, here in New York, July 14th through 15th. Well, I'm sure that's virtual, but... Uh, and there's a call for papers through May 1st for Decouple Days. So to find out more, join us at drupal.org slash community slash events. We are organizing Drupal Camp NYC for 2021, and we're looking for people to help. It's uh, tentatively scheduled to be in the end of October. Um, and if you are interested in helping in any way, again, in our Slack channel, you can join the channel hashtag camp hyphen organize, or you can email us at camp hyphen volunteer at drupalnyc.org. So great times there, and we hope to see you at Drupal Camp NYC. Are you interested in, in speaking? One, you can speak tonight. It's still time to get a lightning talk in, but if you have a topic uh, that you want to present, we have slots available um, of any length, and it can be about Drupal. It can be about a different topic from Drupal that you think this Drupal community might be interested in hearing. It can be a short lightning talk or a longer presentation if you have that to give. So get in touch with us at speak at drupalnyc.org or in our Slack channel and present. It's a lot of fun. I'd like to take a second to see if anybody's hiring or if anybody's looking. Um, and if you are, you can just unmute and take a moment to introduce yourself. I'll get started and say, my team is looking to add a data expert. Um, so that's not a report builder. That's somebody that really understands like Google tag managers, what those can do, what advanced analytics can do, like moving into Google analytics for using data studio, using BigQuery, stuff like that. So if, uh, anybody has any interest in a data job like that, please get in touch with me. 
And anyone else? All righty. Well, now let's take a second to introduce ourselves. As uh, I'll start off, my name is Jed. I work for Linkwell Health, where that uh, that data position I just mentioned is available. Uh, we help create healthy experiences in healthcare and the healthcare industry. Um, and I'm in New York, and I've been a Drupaler for a long time. So, who would like to go next? I can go ahead. Uh, I am Neil Drum. I work for the Drupal Association on the engineering team, uh, help, helping build Drupal.org and all the services we support. And uh, I am in uh, Catskill, uh, the village of Catskill, New York. I'm Scott Walpo. Uh, we handle Drupal projects. We, we, like, we specialize in workflow and um, business process management. So like, you know, a complex system to, to move inventory through a system or produce manufacturing, um, working on my opposite project, which kind of is, is do a lot of different neat stuff and move data around. Um, the only cat still I have is CC and she's napping in, in her tray. But um, that's about it. My name is Holling Poon. I work for the New York Public Library. Uh, I paused a little bit when somebody asked whether or not we're hiring because we have a very dynamic environment. We have a, a senior DevOps uh, engineer position and it's going to be most likely working with our digital repository. Uh, if that sounds unfamiliar, check out digitalcollections.mipl.org and uh, uh, basically, you're helping us out managing the images and all the uh, resources that's out there. So join us. I guess I'll go. Uh, my name is Rich Cherboga. I am project manager at Smile Train, a uh, nonprofit based out of New York. And because I just saw the other slide, I just joined the Drupal Association, like while you were talking about it. So. Yay! <laughs> Got one. <laughs> now, now, Rich, you also saw the nice slide about Drupal Camp. We really need people to help with Drupal Camp. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the channel on, on Slack. Rich, which, what's your skill set? Uh, right now, I'm doing project management, but I've been doing web dev for like 20 years. Okay. But not on Drupal. <laughs> on the other one. <laughs> I, just, I just got into Drupal maybe like two and a half years ago. Nice. And I'm JD. Uh, I'm a freelance senior Drupal architect, uh, backend developer and consultant, and I'm based in New Jersey City. And hi, everyone. I'm Martin Anderson Klutz. I work at Northern, which was formerly Digital Echidna. We're up in London, Ontario, Canada. And uh, yeah, I've been doing Drupal for a while. Uh, the shop where I work is now about half Drupal. So uh, the other half being e-commerce, we do a bunch of kind of like Magento and Shopify type stuff. Excellent. Thanks, Martin. I think you'll be hearing from Martin a little bit in just a minute. He's going to be one of our presenters tonight. Um, but moving on to that, is there anybody who would like to do a lightning talk? We've allotted a little space here. If anyone wanted to raise their hand and jump in. Well. I'm excited to hear Martin talk, and I think we should move to that. So, Martin, I'm going to pass you the baton here, or I think you might be able to just grab the screen share. So. Just get everything rolling. All right. Well, definitely uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk to all of you and um, appreciate everybody showing up. I know it's been an absolutely beautiful day here, uh, the nicest day we've had so far. So definitely don't, uh, I'm not going to judge anybody who's spending uh, an evening on their patio or on their balcony enjoying a cold beverage. Um, I will say before I really get into this that uh, full disclosure, I will be doing this session 
next week as part of DrupalCon. So doing this as a bit of a, of a trial run in front of a live audience. So any feedback would be great. Also on that note, um, the format this year is 30 minutes, including questions. So I've tried to make this pretty succinct. I'll move through it pretty fast. Um, but there is other stuff that we can sort of dive into at the end if uh, you guys want to sort of learn more or see uh, some other things that aren't covered as we move through the initial set of content. So as I say, I'm Martin Anderson Klutz on Drupal.org. I go by ManClue, um, and that's also my like Twitter and Facebook handle and a bunch of other things. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, I was our company was Digital Kitten, and now it's Northern. And... Um, in terms of the format of the talk tonight, it's really going to be uh, largely a demo. So I'm going to have some slides to set a bit of context, um, but for the most part, it's really around this fresh install of Drupal 9 that I've made. And if we actually look at the site here, you can log in and see that it's just a fresh install. It's only got our article and basic page content types. So in terms of uh, doing a base install, if you wanted to like maybe follow along as too much, but, but sort of reproduce this afterwards, um, there's the simplest way to do a fresh install of Drupal 9. Um, I like to have things look a little prettier. So I've added in admin toolbar, the Jin admin theme and uh, Jin toolbar, and then also set uh, Olivero, which is that uh, it's officially experimental, but I think they're trying to get it stable for Drupal 9.2. So um, those are all the things to get to uh, the state there. I like to smush them all into kind of like one chain command. You could do a bash script if you prefer, but, um, but anyway, if you wanted to reproduce it, those are, those are kind of the steps to get to where we are with that um, fresh install of Drupal 9. And so what we're going to do as our first step is install one module. So we're gonna go poser, where Drupal Smart Date Now, I've started using Composer 2, which is so much faster. If you haven't tried it out, you really owe it to yourself to do that. We've got our uh, module and dependencies in, in the site now, so we can just enable them with Drush. Go with Smart. And ask us to confirm. And then having done that, we can go back to our site. And now I have the option to whoop, have to refresh this. And now we have the option to add an event. But before we get into that, uh, we should really define what we mean when we talk about a robust event system. So as we saw, we've got an event content type. We also want it to have kind of app-like input. So um, I would say upgraded in terms of maybe some of the intelligence and making it easier for some of your editors. Uh, we want to have uh, the ability to click a checkbox and make it an all day event, uh, manage recurring events, be able to set time zones for our events. Um, from an output standpoint, have some more natural language output and we'll, we'll dig into that in a bit in terms of what that means. We want to have views for event listings, so to be able to show upcoming and past events, and then also to have more of a calendar view and included in that have the ability to sort of manage our events with a drag and drop functionality. And finally, we, I personally prefer to keep uh, event content as nodes, so that if you want to have, let's say, on your homepage, you know, news and events as a single view, it's easy to do those, and also to be able to build on those. So. Um, have an event system that's not sort of a closed system, but something that you can, you know, add different fields and all of those kinds of uh, great things. Use the, the power of Drupal and its uh, ability to define content types and all of those good things. So for the most part, uh, what we're talking about, gonna be talking about using is this smart date module, which um, in the last under two years went from uh, really being just an idea to now one of the 500 uh, most popular modules on Drupal.org. And really the idea that it started with was around the, the input. So um, a while back I was working on a Drupal website for a local fair and it occurred to me how tedious it was to do the data entry for these dates because 
Um, a standard date field has seven different pieces of data that you have to populate manually. So you've got your month, day, hour, minute, seconds, and then AM or PM. And then if it's a range, then you have to, to double that. So you've got 14. Whereas if you create, an, like let's say a meeting in your Google Calendar, um, it's going to come up with uh, the next hour on the hour as a default, and then assume a duration of one hour so that even if your uh, meeting isn't actually starting then, you maybe only have to adjust you know, two or three pieces of data before you actually have your thing sort of defined to when it's likely to fall. Also, I'll point out that uh, both of these examples have that all day checkbox and the ability to, um, to manage repeating events. And I think I had it cut off here, but they both have the ability to manage time zones as well. It's really trying to bring some of that you know, best of breed functionality, what, what your editors are used to using um, in the other applications that they're using every day, try and bring some of that into Drupal. And then from an output standpoint, if, if somebody was to say to me, uh, hey, when's that uh, Drupal NYC meetup gonna be? I wouldn't say, oh, it's, it's gonna be on April 7th, uh, 6 p.m. to April 7th, 7.30 p.m. I'd say it's gonna be April 7th from 6 to 7.30. And so um, had been asked for a few different client sites to, to try and achieve some of that same kind of deduplication in terms of how the, the output gets constructed. And so you can see some examples here of, of you know, only putting the date once, 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, if it's a date range of all day, just go 18th or 14th to 15th, some of those kinds of things. So again, trying to make the output of that uh, much more natural. And then uh, while I was uh, thinking about some of those other issues, I was getting a site ready to launch and realized that there was actually um, a pretty severe performance issue for one page on the site uh, was, was by far the slowest page. And it was actually an events archive, which got me wondering, you know, why that would be. There was hardly any event data on the site for it to, to have to sort of parse through. Um, so it didn't really make sense to me why, why this one page with almost no data was, was taking so long. And so I enabled debugging in views and I could see that the query that it was constructing was actually kind of horrendous. You can see on a row by row basis, it was converting the, the string, which is how core date fields store their data um, into sort of a, a native date format and then having to do the same thing with the current date. And so on a row by row basis, doing all of those conversions is, is what was making it so slow. And so I decided that, um, Really, this called for a new module to be able to provide that editor experience, to provide the output formatting, and then to, uh, to make the performance better by using timestamps, which is something that Drupal Core uses anyway for a lot of the, the date, manage, or date data that it manages. So like uh, when a node was created, when it was last managed, when a user last logged in, all of those are stored by timestamps already. So with that, now let's get back to our demo and Let's go ahead and create an event. So when we go in here, uh, you can see now we've got an interface that has some similarity to some of those examples that we saw. So we've got our start and end date, but we've also got this concept of duration. We can change the duration and it'll automatically update the end. Um, if we update the beginning, it'll automatically update the end based on the duration that we've set. Uh, we've got our all day checkbox. And um, let's just add a couple of more examples here so that you can see some of the output formatting. So, so you can see that if you have an event that rolls over into the next date, that it automatically updates the date there. And let's also add an all day event. and then make another one that's a range. So. All right. so now if we save that, we can see that it's given us that output out of the box where we've got our time range there. It's um, not doing as well on the uh, date range, and that's because the format that it's using by default includes the day, and then it's it's harder to deduplicate that once you've got the, the day part. So let's actually go into our output configuration for our event. Uh, 
Martin, can you specify how many hours are in, in a day? Um, how many hours are in a day? We, so, we, know, we know 24 plus change are in a day, but we're talking about a business day. So this way, well, if, you, if your event is, let's say, every day from 8 to 6, you can see a full day, it puts those hours in automatically. Uh, it, it doesn't currently do that. Um, that's a thing it might be able to do. There is a function in there called uh, is all day. And uh, so the way smart day works out of the box is it treats all day as being from midnight to sort of 11.59 p.m. Okay. So theoretically, you could extend that uh, smart day class, override that is all day function to, to maybe put uh, those custom values in. Um, there's probably something you could make work in there, but it's it's not a use case that I've been asked about before, okay. so it, it's not something that it uh, it kind of supports out of the box. So we've got our smart date formatter. We can also do duration, but let's just leave uh, that for now. And smart date uses its own different formats, so we're going to just use this compact one for now. And when we update that, refresh it, uh, you can see that that gives cleaner output. So we've got April 12 to 14. Got our time range there. Um, again, when it crosses over the date, it needs to put the date on both. So it's it's smart enough to, to shorten it when it can, uh, but also to understand when it's actually appropriate to show the date at both the beginning and the end. So uh, the other thing that uh, we had mentioned was about using time zones. And Smart Date supports time zones out of the box, but not every site needs them. And so it actually uses a different uh, widget. So if you want the time range with uh, time zone, you just enable that widget. And the other thing that it does, so we, by default, it'll assume that it's going to be um, the site time zone unless it's told different. And if it is this uh, site time zone, it doesn't store anything, but you could say always store, you know, the user's time zone, or you could say, you know, always turn it into some specific one. And then you can specify which one that's gonna be. But let's just uh, save the de default behavior. The other thing that, that is um, potentially a time saver is that you can also, instead of having your editors have to pick through this huge long list of sort of every time zone that exists on planet Earth, you can also choose a subset of those. So you can go, we could go, let's choose Anchorage and let's choose Chicago. There are other time zones than New York? <laughs> Believe it or not, I've heard. I mean, I'm in the same time zone as you guys, so, you know, to me it seems like it's the best one, but uh, let's go Denver, Los Angeles, and of course, saving the best for last, New York. So if we save that, and let's go here and add a new event. Let's go. Event with time zone. And now we can go in and say, we've got just those ones that we defined. And so let's actually just save it for Denver for now. Let's set this maybe back in the past a little bit. And when we save this, it's showing us two different times because it's showing us the, the time in the time zone that it was saved as well as the site one, but we're not actually seeing the time zone because the date format that we're using doesn't actually use, excuse me, the um, does, isn't actually showing time zones. So for that, we actually need to go into our configuration and update our format. So this is the one that we're using. So let's update that. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Drupal's native uh, date time formats, you'll know that it's just sort of a single uh, PHP date string. Uh, Smart date uses formats that are more granular to, to achieve some of that output formatting, um, but they're still PHP date strings. So let's go ahead and just update these so that they include the time zone. You can see you can customize that all day label. You can customize the separator and how you put the date and time together as well as which one comes first. Um, there are some other pieces that I don't think we'll get too far into, but the last piece I'll mention before we move on is that all of this configuration is translatable. So one of the things that you may find if you work on uh, sites 
that have to span different cultures is, for example, in German, they use a very a different, um, they have a di different set of sort of like common expectations around like, does the date come first or the time or, you know, some of those kinds of things. And so um, within a single site, you can have the same format, but um, reconfigure it for different languages so that um, each language will see a formatting output that is, um, you know, better tied to uh, the local conventions. So now if we refresh this with our time zones, now you'll see it says seven to eight mountain time or nine to 10 Eastern time. So um, if you want later on, I could show the process of actually creating like a custom uh, date format from scratch. Uh, but for now, let's uh, keep on with our demo. So we talked about recurring events, which is a pretty common use case. Again, uh, people who are using these popular calendar applications are used to having that functionality. And even though the interfaces will be a bit different between them, if you think about the types of options that they provide users, they're actually pretty similar between them. And so there's full support for recurring dates. So uh, from, from a view standpoint, there's no difference between a recurring date and just a, a standard multi-value uh, field of uh, dates. So uh, we're going to get more into our demo, but first we need to go and enable a submodule. So we're going to go Drift Shein, Smart Date Occur. And now with that, we need to go into, uh, actually, let's go here. Let's go look at the field configuration. So um, now that we've enabled that submodule, we now have this checkbox to allow recurring date values. And it gives us this option for months to extend. So if you had a recurring date and you didn't specify an end, it's not going to you know, keep generating instances until it like fills up your database or runs out of memory. Uh, it has this concept of a maximum uh, window, uh, how far out it's going to generate instances, and then it has like a cron job so that it'll always have, you know, 12 months out, uh, generate extra instances as needed. Here's where you can set some of the other defaults. So uh, you can see this next hour, but it also has the other defaults that uh, core date fields would have. So if you wanted it to be just now or an hour from now, you can do that. But again, I feel like um, part of the reason for smart date was to have that next hour. We can also uh, customize those duration values that appear in the um, duration dropdown. So we could have the option to have um, something that has no duration. So maybe it's like a website launch where it's not like it has a start and an end, but it's just a start. Um, so we could say none there. We could say we want to have, you know, 180 minutes and call that three hours. And we can easily change which default duration we want. So if we save that, and now we go and we say, let's make another event. You can see now it's got our new duration. If we change the uh, duration to none, it's going to hide the end because there's no need to define an end. Uh, let's set this back to 30 minutes and let's say we want to have this repeat daily. So we can say how many days, on which specific days do we want it to recur? There was a question about saying, you know, monthly, we could say monthly on the, you know, second Wednesday uh, as an example. Or you could say, you know, the last Wednesday. So uh, those kinds of things are pretty easy to define. Let's say we want to have it recur weekly. Let's go every other week. I would end after 10 occurrences. We could also say on a specific day it should end. And we could say we want it to be every other week on Monday and Thursday. And let's just backdate the start to here. Make sure I always forget to set a title. And then we save that. So now we can see it's generated all of those instances, um, which was a pretty simple process. Um, that output though, for a recurring event, you know, obviously the, the more recurring instances you have, um, the less useful that is to look at. And so we can go in and update 
Now that we've installed, again, the recurring submodule, we've got uh, a couple of additional formatters. So let's use this recurring one. And again, we can customize which smart date format we're using, but now we also have the ability to say how many instances should it show. So we, let's say we say, we only want, only want to show the one most recent and the three upcoming instances and save that. And now when we refresh our current recurring event, you can see we've got that, that uh, sort of text description of the recurring um, date rule. So every two weeks on Monday and Thursday at 8 p.m. for 10 times. And then it's showing us the, the one most recent and the three upcoming. This output structure is really defined in a twig template. So if you like the overall functionality, but you want you know, the rule at the bottom, you want, don't want these things to be details elements, you want them to be nested divs or you know, a definition list or you know, whatever markup you think is better, then you can easily override um, this twig template in your theme and, and make the markup whatever you think is gonna be most useful for you. So that is the recurring events. Now let's look at the calendar. So you can see again, uh, all of this calendar was provided out of the box. Um, it's showing now all of our events. So, you know, our one-off events as well as our recurring dates are all showing there. We could say, I don't like these two being on the same day. So I want to reschedule that one. It's going to come up and ask for confirmation. You can configure whether or not it needs to ask for this confirmation. Personally, I like it because I feel like with drag and drop, people may change things without meaning to. So you can see that it's updated there. We can also go in and look at today and say, let's reschedule that earlier in the day. And maybe we can even drag and drop to make it a longer event. And so then if we refresh our calendar, we can see that it's gone in and it's saved all of those changes for us. The other thing we can do is double click if we want to make a new event. So uh, let's just call this calendar created event. And you can see that it's saved uh, in this creation process where in the calendar, both the date and the time that we clicked. So if we click to save that and we go back to our calendar, you can see it's created that exactly where we clicked within the calendar. All right. So um, that's really uh, most of what I wanted to cover. Uh, you know, hopefully you've seen that we've been able to deliver on, on all of those pieces that we talked about up front. So providing that better editor experience, that's, that's kind of more in line with the app, a calendar app software that uh, your editors may be using on a daily basis. Um, it's based on timestamps for better performance. I guess we didn't really necessarily demonstrate that, but it's, you know, what's it's using under the hood. Um, We've got that output formatting that's meant to be more natural language. And then for ease of site building, you've got the ability to manage recurring dates, use interactive calendars or manage time zones. So that is um, the main part of the demo or the talk that I brought. Uh, definitely happy to, to dig into um, any pieces of this that you guys are interested in seeing more of, there are uh, other pieces that um, you know we could potentially demo. There's actually a beta release. Is it beta? Yeah, I think it's a beta release of Smart Date with a couple of new features, like uh, using the HTML time element um, as a wrapper to potentially help for things like SEO. Um, but I'll stop talking and, and open it up to you guys. Fantastic, Martin. No that was uh, very well presented and, and I love these presentations. Like I, I have not used smart date and uh, man, I know places where I could plug it in right now and see a big improvement. Um, one question I had in the drag and drop, can you enforce any rules about like maybe one event in a time slot so that you can't double book that, that type of logic? Have you run across that? Uh, that's, not to my knowledge, uh, it's definitely possible that um, that full calendar would support that. I know that there is there is like a callback that it uses uh, when when you complete the drag, and so you definitely could could again add on to Smart Date and potentially add some of those additional kinds of validation. But out of the box, um, no, it's just gonna you know 
look for the destination and, and try and, um, and honor that. It does some validation in terms of like access checks, but, uh, but for now that's, that's as much of a kind of validation that it's really doing. Perfect, thank you. Yep. Martin, how about critical path in that? It's kind of similar to double booking. Uh, critical path meaning? Meaning that, um, well, if you're doing with multiple things, could you add, I'm adding, adding to the system to use critical path to, to build a decent project manager. Oh, you're thinking almost like doing Gantt type charts? Gantt type charts or similar things like that. Like I use Redmine and Redmine is the least crappiest of the PMs I found out there. But it does have critical path. And right. so, and I'm looking for, for in planning time things for people to do times if they need to allow a certain amount of time to do something, but they need to do something before that, they can't get to the next time element. I'm thinking outside the box of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, I, I love, um, you know, hearing the questions for people. So the, the, um, the feature that we saw of being able to select which time zones to expose is, you know, I was doing a similar talk and one of the camps last year and somebody said like, could it do that? And I was like, it doesn't, but it wouldn't be hard to add. And so the, you know, the next release of smart date that was, that was included. So I love hearing new ideas. Um, for that one specifically, I'd have to, to give some thought into how that, that ties in. I feel like um, it's, a, it's a different kind of relationship because it's almost like you need to have a defined relationship within two entities and also even like the display of how to show that is like different from you know a calendar or a day or, or a standard like node or field output so I'd have to give some thought to that um, I know there is there's an entity relationship diagram module for Drupal where you can like draw things out and, and have them connected I forget the name of the library that that one uses and I almost feel like that may be closer to, to being able to show like critical path and Gantt charts than, than maybe something like this. Okay, because coincidentally, for one of the things we just did for the first, first of the my new system, we actually have people entering their time, but I don't think we're ever gonna get them to actually clock in and clock out like they're supposed to. But we may, there is a module called clock that you can click on and get the time. But trying to get people to do that is a hard thing. But I like this. This is good. I mean, it's, is this used for DrupalCon? Um, I'm not sure. I know. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, we're think. just using the basic date module. Right. Um, Fox Valley. Um, we, we, may, we may steal it for Drupal Camp. <laughs> Yeah, by all means. I mean, uh, I know there's there's kind of an initiative underway around trying to build out. Um, I forget what, so there used to be a distro that was like the Drupal organizing COD committee, yeah, conference organizing yeah. distribution COD. Yeah, so I think there's been some talk about trying to sort of maybe not resurrect that, but have at least something that's um, maybe maybe flexible enough that, that people who want sort of very different things can still have a useful starting point. Um, if something like this, you know, was something that people thought would be useful to include in that, that would be great. Um, and definitely open to, you know, again, if, if people have ideas of like, it would be great if we could do this other thing, um, open to some of those uh, suggestions. So, um, yeah. Uh, Martin, so, uh... Huh. The first thing that came to mind when I saw the title of the talk is, hey, Drupal NYC needs this. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to revamp our website and get our events posted with a calendar, right? All the good stuff that we should be doing. So this is kind of an obvious candidate for that. Um, well, you know, the, the interface is great. Like everything like looks great. It's super functional. I thought, it, I think it's so elegantly constructed. Um, I'm curious uh, how much thought has gone into accessibility concerns and whether it's kind of been through a review. So yes, it, it definitely has been through accessibility reviews. Um, I will be honest and say it's it's maybe been some time. So I know the, the initial um, interface was thoroughly tested for accessibility. I, 
not sure off the top of my head the uh, the recurring elements, um, some of the new pieces that were introduced there. Um, 100% how accessible they are, but um, but definitely I've tested for like keyboard navigation and some of those kinds of things. So um, so hopefully if there are gaps, they're not huge. Um, but yeah, I, I did definitely try and keep it accessible as much as possible. Cool. Um, and I also wanted to ask uh, with the recurring date capability, so it sounded like that basically consisted of like a cron job that creates instances in the future, and I guess is a reference back to some recurring entity or something like that um, to, to like link them together. Right. So if you when you when we made that uh, recurring event, and we basically had the the one field value that we said make this recurring, what happens is Drupal will make all of those instances. So first, what it does is it it figures out all of the instances for that rule. So either from like you know, the, the start to whenever the, the defined end is, or if it's, there's no end defined, the start to, you know, the, the end of that time window. Um, then it'll store that rule as like its own entity. And so um, all of the, the, the instances for that rule basically are stored with an association back to that rule entity. Um, but it's kind of like the opposite. If you're familiar with the date recur module, it works the opposite way, where you store the uh, the recurrence rule directly attached to the node, and then um, I think the newer version may not even store the instances separately. It just generates them on the fly whenever you need them. Um, but the instances are kind of like the piece that's one level removed, and that's why it's more complicated. If you want to make a view, you have to like basically join it out to the other data. And then if you want to mix recurring events and non-recurring events, then it becomes more complicated because they're, they're stored in completely different ways. So one of the things that I really wanted with this one was to, to try and make it easy for, you know, site builders and, and some of those other things. So to, to clarify, the, you're saying it's, it's difficult to put together a view that combines recurring and non-recurring events with SmartDate? No, the opposite. So with oh, SmartDate, okay, I tried to make it so that they'd be really <laughs> yeah. easy. So like we saw with the calendar, we had, you know, non-recurring and recurring events, and they just all show up because to Drupal, they're all just like field houses. So it's the same. Um, at sort of a view level, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily see a difference between um, a recurring event that's set to recur five times. And if you made, let's say, uh, a multi-value field and just had five individual instances. It, a view sees those as the same. Mm, interesting. And how does it handle exceptions to recurring rules, right? So if you have a monthly event, but you need to reschedule one of the instances. So, I mean, to some extent we, we saw that, right? When we um, just drag that one. So you can definitely do that in the calendar is like the easiest way to do it. But if we go into our recurring event, you can also go in, there's sort of a separate interface where you can go manage instances and then it'll bring up this modal where we can say for this particular one, let's just cancel it out, right? And uh, it will visually indicate that through strike through. And then if we say this one, we wanna override and let's say instead of 8 PM, we wanna start it at six. Save that, then it's going to <clears throat> italicize that. It's not super clear in this font, um, but it's italicizing that. So that at a glance, you can sort of see which ones are um, overridden by, you know, italicized or strike through. So we close that and then save it. Then we can see that, uh, oh, it's probably because it's too far out in the future, but if I switch back to our other formatter. Um, let's go some date. And then we see it. And we can see that we've got the other one. And this is a bit of a weird recurring rule. So it's a bit harder to tell that we uh, deleted one. But it should have been in there. Anyway. Is there is there a flag or something that gets set so that in a view, let's say a calendar view, you could highlight in a different color or something that is is a, an exception to the recurring rule? Um, 
Well, that's an interesting question. So I don't know that, so you're saying like for here, because this one, you know, normally would be here, but we moved it over to here. Could that appear in like a different color? Yeah, something like uh, that. It doesn't do that now, but if it's something you really needed, you could open up a feature request and, you know, could look into how hard that would be because um, certainly as we saw within the actual instance management uh, field, you know, we're able to treat those differently based on that. So um, I'm not sure off the top of my head how hard that would be to uh, incorporate into that. I do know that full calendar view gives you the ability to, let's say, have different dates in different colors based on like content type or a specific taxonomy or some of those other kinds of things. Nice. Any other questions? Yeah, the example I always run into for uh, event listings on Drupal.org is uh, having a recurring event for a meetup like this, but uh, yeah, the thing I'd want to see is a different description for each event so you know the different speakers and if that was a whole uh, field system that could also store arbitrary data uh, such as a flag for an uh, indicator if it was moved or not or something else. Yeah, so there's... Um... There's something that I, I have in mind for Smart Date that's kind of like the next big um, piece on it, which is to, to essentially um, per instance on recurring events, be able to associate them with like a, you know, a fieldable entity sort of an idea. So at that point, yeah, you could override the title. Um, that could be the basis for having like registration or, you know, other kinds of things. Um, where you could basically add functionality or, you know, extra fields or extra metadata or whatever you need on that associated entity. So I think some, uh, a lot of the data structure is actually already in place. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's some code to be written before that'll be, uh, available. Doug, did you have a question? Yeah, guys, I did. Um, just, you know, one of the uh, things we've been using a lot is Civi event, and it has recurring events, and then you can use Civi CRM entity to pull everything into a Drupal view. I was curious, Martin, if you had, you know, evaluated it, and if so, what were the, uh, you know, jump off points or, or, or distinction that you saw between what you, what you presented and, and uh, Civi event? Yeah, so uh, when I first started working on Smart Date, you know, I, I talked in the, the presentation about it was really about the the widget and then the formatter and then the um, also wanting to make sure that it was going to have good performance. So a lot of these other things have really come out of people saying, well, well could it do this? Um, like the calendar was an early example that, that people said it would be great if it was, you know, integrated with a calendar at the time. I think the calendar module was like, hadn't been maintained in, in a couple of years. It sounds like it's coming back. So I'm, I'm hoping at some point um, that we can get smart date and the calendar modules to work together. Um, but recurring events was definitely another one that people suggested. And I definitely looked at that as being one that people were using already. And so my preference absolutely would have been to say, if we could make smart date work with, um, that, sorry, did you say recurring events or recurring dates or? Well, I mean, just looking at in Civi CRM, you know, it has the recurring events. So the scenario where, you know, if you're meeting on, say, the fourth Monday of the month and then you roll up on Memorial Day, you just you plug in the exceptions. I mean, all that is there out of the box. So I'm just trying to find a distinction between, plus it enables online registration. Then you can do some things like, you know, pull all the registrants up if it's snowing or something and send them an email, whatever, you know. So I'm just wondering what the difference or advantage of this particular, you know, modular configuration in D9 would be over, over that or if you guys had, had looked at it at all? So unfortunately, I don't uh, personally know what uh, Civi CRM is using for that. So I can't really comment on like exactly how smart data is different from that. But um, I know date recur, when I first started looking at, at how could we make smart date work with recurring events, um, 
I feel like uh, date recur, I think it's like full sort of text name is recurring dates field. Um, seemed to be the one that most people were using. And so I, I kind of opened up an issue in their queue to say like, hey, we've got the smart date module, would be great if our modules could work together. And maintainer um, really didn't seem interested. And so it was one of those things that I, it kind of sat in the back of my mind as like, it would be great to do that. Uh, I think I had a more pressing need for the calendar and also the, the maintainer of that module seemed a bit more open. He actually ended up Im implementing like a plugin system for um, full calendar view. And so now there's, um, there's basically a plugin code within SmartDate that, that uh, manages that integration. So it's great. From my standpoint, he, he basically just defined that plugin type. And then um, occasionally there's been changes in full calendar review that's caused me to need to, to update that plugin, but it's been pretty stable for the last year or so. So um, I know there's another module called Recurring Events. Uh, I think Owen Bush is the maintainer of that one. Um, he seems open to collaborating. Um, so there's, there's a possibility at some level that SmartDate might be able to work with that module. That one is actually a good example of one that does allow um, kind of registration. It has its own like sub-module for that. Um, that one uses custom entities though. So again, if, if your requirement is that you wanna have events as nodes, then, then that one may have some challenges for you. There was another module called Bookable Calendar that again has the, the registration piece. Um, that one actually uses the smart date interface, but again, uses custom entities. Um, I've also looked, there's a module called RNG. Um, I always forget what that stands for. When I look at the acronym, I always think it's a random number generator, but it's, in, it's an events registration system for Drupal. Um, and that's one that I think potentially holds some promise in terms of being able to integrate with SmartDate and, and give some of that extra functionality. Um, definitely would prefer to not rewrite things that are already exist elsewhere. If we can like make, um, you know, robust parts of the Drupal ecosystem work together, I think that's, that's definitely better than, you know, people sort of reinventing the wheel all the time. So, um, so yeah, there's a, a few different places that I, I have looked at. Um, and, you know, if, if somebody was like, you know, bookable entities everywhere is the one you should be using. And, you know, here's the, the five reasons why that's better than anything else, then absolutely open to suggestions and, uh, and would love to hear people's thoughts in terms of like ways that, that this could be better or, you know, work with other modules to, to sort of make it more useful. So. I think you hit on one difference there, which is that in Civi CRM, you can put the events in but those are not going to be nodes. And I know that's something that's bedeviled us a little bit that, you know, even though on the client end, you know, somebody's inputting an event, they're fully expecting that to land in somebody's email, uh, you know, on kind of like a node digest format or something, uh, a Drupal new content notification. And you, you can probably do it with Civi CRM entity, but uh, not, you know, you have to do a little more configuring for that. So that's, I think that's one advantage right there. Any other questions? That was fantastic, Martin. Thanks. Good luck at DrupalCon. I think it's going to go over well. Thanks. Looking it was great. It. I'll see you at DrupalCon. Right on. See you there. Here, here. Thanks, Martin. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a good night. You too. All right. So I wanted to talk about the next events with Drupal NYC. We're launching a new series called Lunch and Learn. These are going to be events that won't uh, be in the evening. They'll be over lunch. Um, so if that fits better into your schedule, a little different format, uh, should be exciting. And we're going to do the first one on April 20th. Uh, so we hope you'll join us at noon on April 20th for Lunch and Learn. And then we'll be back here at the, at the traditional meetup on May 5th at 6 p.m., um, in the evening. Announcing some of those uh, topics that we'll talk about at this new Lunch and Learn on April 20th, we're going to have a presentation called IP Ranger, the IP friendly network detection module, and uh, automated testing for Drupal. So be sure to join us then. The more traditional meetup coming next May could feature you 
So get in touch with us, become a presenter. It's a lot of fun. Reach out to us at this email address, which is speak at drupalnyc.org or join our Slack community and join us in there. And without further ado, that is our Drupal meetup for April, 2021. I hope you stick around and, and join us for some socializing in our after party. Um, Thanks again, Martin. That was a fantastic presentation.